Welcome to the first midweek moment of 2023. Today being January 4th, it is the feast day of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. So let us keep in our prayers in a very special way our brothers and sisters over at St. Elizabeth Seton Parish as we open with a prayer in her honor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O God, who crowned with the gift of true faith St. Elizabeth Ann Seton's burning zeal, zeal for you to find you, and grant by her intercession and example that we may always seek you with diligent love and find you in daily service with sincere faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Please note that our next 50-50 monthly raffle will be on January 30th. There was an error in one of the announcements, so apologies for that. The Southwest Young Adult Ministry is sponsoring a trivia night on January 4th at St. Stephen. The evening will start at 7 p.m. The next monthly faithful family faith formation session will be January 9th and 11th. Sacred Journey Youth Ministry, again, there is still time for teens to sign up for the Kentucky Mission Trip in June. Teens and young adults are also invited to an encounter night on January 7th at Our Lady of the Woods. The teen hosted mass will be here at St. Julie on January 8th at the 6 p.m. mass and it will be followed by a teen meeting. There is a volleyball league open for teens during January and March. So please contact Kristen for more information on these and every other youth ministry event. Bingo will be January 15th. The next ice cream social will also be January 15th after the 6 p.m. mass. St. Julie Book Club invites all book lovers to the monthly meetings on the first Wednesdays of the month. Prayer Shawl Ministry invites everyone to a gathering on Thursday, January 5th at 11.30 a.m. and to learn more about the important work of this ministry. Our next port lunch will be on January 22nd. If you are interested in forming a Team St. Julie to train and run for the Chicago Marathon 2023, please contact Father Roy. Finally, all are invited to celebrate Lunar New Year with our St. Agnes Vietnamese Ministry on Sunday, January 29th. The 6 p.m. Mass on that day will be bilingual and the reception will follow in the Divine Center. And so again, I'm joined by Nathan um, we are going to be talking about the 12 days of Christmas, something that you may have heard, um, but, some, uh, but a song that you may not realize that, it's, that it has importance in our Catholic faith. Yeah, thank you, Father, for having me. Um, and the 12 days of Christmas, as you said, is a song. Um, and and maybe, maybe you're like me, you think the song's a little bit cheesy, but there's some deep meaning to this song. Um, it actually gets its roots um, in the country of England. Um, many of our parishioners uh, probably have an, uh, ancestors that hail from that country. But in the mid-1500s to the mid-1800s, you might not be aware, but Catholicism was illegal to practice um, in England. Um, and not illegal like, okay, you got a felony, here's a ticket. Illegal, you got put in chains, and then brutally murdered. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, some of the nicest ways that Catholics were um, were executed were by hanging. I mean, there were drawing and quartering. I mean, you can. I won't. I won't go through all the the list of gruesome details, but there were many um, very harsh punishments uh, doled out to Catholics for practicing their faith. Um, now, as Catholics, we know that teaching our faith is an essential component of of being Catholic. Right, spreading the gospel message. Well, if you live in a country, Father, where mm -hmm. it's very, very dangerous to do such a thing, you know, Catholics in England had to figure out a way. So they they used code, um, and one of the easiest ways to remember um, anything, whether or not it's you know a tenet of the faith or it's you know a history lesson, is through song. Um, the the rhyming and repetition um, helps cement that in our memory. So that's what Catholics in England did. They yep. used the song the 12 days of Christmas. Um, so each of those days, 1 through 12, actually represent and are teaching tools for very specific components of our Catholic faith. 
So Father, could let's just start with the first three, right? On the first day of Christmas, second day, and you know, you're a Trinitarian, so why don't we go four days, okay. right? First four days of Christmas, what are those supposed to represent? So before we get into that, the, uh, of course the 12 days of Christmas song refer to my true love. And we have to remember that in, in that that were those that phrase my true love was code for God because God is our true love and so the first day is the partridge in a pear tree second is the two turtle doves three is three French horns and then four calling birds partridge in the pear tree Jesus Christ himself yeah, the one Savior two turtle doves Old Testament, New Testament. Uh, the two halves. Mm -hmm. Three French hens, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then the four calling birds, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Oh, I love that because they're calling birds, right? Calling birds sing a song and, and call us. And that, what do the evangelists do but call us to a greater awareness of Jesus? Correct. Love it. So then what about uh, day five, six, and seven? Five are the five gold rings stand, uh, representing the Pentateuch. For those of you who do not know what the Pentateuch is or the Torah, it's the first five books of the Old Testament. The first five books of the Old Testament were, are, have been and still are very important to our Jewish brothers and sisters. And it's a recognition that our roots still, are, still find themselves in the Jewish tradition. Six geese laying, six days of creation. Seven swans are swimming, the seven sacraments. And if we're going to break it down in, four, uh, in groups of three, we go, if we uh, do the eight made the milking, are the eight beatitudes. So again, it's just reminding, uh, reminding the, uh, the people of the day, even us today, that our lives are rooted in scripture. Love it, love it. So uh, we've, we've gone through... All through, all through seven, the first seven days, and we're already getting a huge basis and foundation for just teaching the core tenets of the Catholic faith. Yeah. So then day nine, 10, 11, and 12, those last four. All right, so day nine, of course, are the nine ladies dancing, representing the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. And then 10 lords a leaping. Number 10, obviously, would be the Ten Commandments. And then 11 are... 11 pipers piping, representing the 11 faithful disciples. So, of course, we know that Judas Iscariot became a traitor, and so he fell away, but 11 of them remained faithful. So that's, uh, they are represented by the 11 pipers piping. The 12 drummers drumming are the 12, 12 points that we find in the Apostles' Creed. So if we break the Apostles' Creed down, there are 12 points to it. Um, we can't, uh, can't get into each one right now, but uh, you know there's, uh, there's 12 points in the Apostles' Creed, and of course that has been immortalized in the 12 drummers drumming. And with those 12 points, if that is something that you'd be interested in hearing more about, in future midweek moments, perhaps we'll go over in greater detail those 12 points of the Apostles' Creed. Um, so to kind of bring us all back, right, those 12 days of Christmas, Right, they all line up and align with to teach in a covert fashion the Catholic faith in a time in England when it was very, very dangerous to do so. You know, and early Christians were, were secret agents, you know, and we, we luckily enough live in a time where we don't have to be a secret agent yep. to teach the faith. So um, let it be a challenge to us in these last few days of the Christmas season and then heading into ordinary time to teach the faith. Right, loud and proud um, to to anyone we meet. And I'll, uh, uh, before we end, of course, the twelve days of Christmas refer to the twelve days between December twenty fifth and January sixth. January sixth had been had traditionally been the feast of the Epiphany, and so of course it would move uh, would move from depending day to day depending on what year what what day of the of the week it fell on a, in a particular year. So the 12 days of Christmas are Chris between tw December 25th and January 6th. And so it reminds us that for us as Catholics, Christmas is not just one day, but it's an entire season. 
for here, for us now, here in this part of the world, we transfer, we have transferred the Feast of the Epiphany from January 6th to the closest Sunday. And so, it, but it continues that idea that Christmas is a season, not just one day. And so we are still very much in the Christmas spirit as Catholics, so let us remember that. And, and before we close, let us also remember in our prayers the soul of Pope Benedict XVI as we will witness his burial tomorrow um, in Rome. And so let us close with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh God, who through, who through the fruitful virginity of Blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And for the repose of the soul of Pope Benedict, eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.